Good, good afternoon. I'm Jill Teep from the University of Washington's Northwest Center for Occupational Health and Safety. Thanks for joining us today. You are logged into the informational live webinar session for the Green Chemistry and Chemical Stewardship Online Certificate Program. I'm your host this afternoon, along with one of our instructors, Pam Eliason. Uh, before we begin today's session, please note that uh, session participants are in listening mode. Feel free to type any questions you may have uh, for myself or for Pam in the chat box. Uh, you can access the chat box by hovering at the bottom or the top of that Zoom window and clicking on chat. Today's session is being recorded and a link following this webinar will be sent to you for review at a later time. So with that, we're just going to uh, take a little time to introduce what a certificate program is, what this program includes, what topics will be covered, and then we'll take some time to get to know Pam and hear about her experience and what, uh, what things about this program she really likes and, and the coursework she's been uh, currently working with our students who are finishing up the current quarter. And then we'll just do a quick wrap up about some nuts and bolts about the certificate program, all right? As I mentioned, I'm Jill Teep. I'm your course administrator. I'm at the University of Washington, Seattle, Environmental and Occupational Health Sciences. Uh, and this is a program of the Northwest Center for Occupational Health and Safety, continuing education programs. And I'm joined by Pam Eliason, one of our uh, course three instructors, who's a senior associate director, industry research program manager, Toxics Use Reduction Institute at the University of Massachusetts Lowell. Uh, so what is a certificate program? It's a focused continuing, educa it's focused continuing edu education in a particular field. It links a series of courses that constitutes a coherent body of knowledge in a discipline, and it's designed primarily for post-baccalaureate participants. Um, it was developed by the University of Washington Professional and Continuing Education and an advisory board of um, industry professionals, nonprofits, and governmental agencies. And our courses and instructors are approved by the University of Washington. So why earn a certificate? Uh, courses contain practical information relevant for a professional working in a specialized field. Instructors are recognized authorities in the professional community. And it's an opportunity to enhance or update your skills and knowledge uh, and to learn from other professionals. I think one thing you'll hear highlighted today is because you uh, join this course as a cohort or can, um, that you really get a chance to learn from each other from many different disciplines. Um, and the certificate credential can facilitate career advancement. Um, certificates, as I mentioned, is cohort based. You do have the opportunity to take courses separately, but it is really valuable to kind of build on each other and get to know some of your fellow students as well. Uh, you're doing a lot of networking with other industry professionals as well as your instructors. Uh, this, this program is really flexible and the schedule of the delivery is really flexible for uh, professionals working at the same time. It's less time and financial commitment than a degree program and a certificate is an academic credential endorsed by the University of Washington. So what will you learn during this program? You'll learn about reducing harmful substances through material decision-making and chemical design. You'll overcome common disconnect between chemical properties, toxicity, and human health, and consider how these factors influence material decision, consideration paid to viable business decisions. It's always gotta make a viable uh, business decision as part of this process. And learning how to identify sustainability issues related to green chemistry practices and how to apply your newly acquired knowledge and skills to remote chemical stewardship. So it really boils down to green chemistry, toxicology, and the business side of things all wrapped into one program. So this a certificate program is comprised, comprised of three different courses. The first one is Sustainability, Toxicity, and Human Health from September 28th to December 11th, 2020, this fall. Uh, there's the second course is Principles of Green Chemistry from January 4th to March 12th at 2021, and Assessment Tools for Safer Chemical Decisions, March 29th to June 4th, 2021. And all of these courses are delivered in an online format. So the first course, Sustainability and to Toxicity in Human Health, is taught by Grace Lasker, who is a Director of Health Studies at the University of Washington Bothell, an adjunct senior lecturer at the Department of Environmental and Occupational Health Sciences, University of Washington, Seattle. And then Kevin Wilhelm uh, is uh, the uh, CEO of Sustainable Business Consulting, who helped build this, this, um, mo these modules. Learning how sustainability can be a key driver for business innovation and how organizations are measured in terms of sustainability, Talk about the triple bottom line, greenwashing, best practices, rubrics for those kind of me measurements. This course will also talk about fundamental ways in which the human body interacts with chemicals, including predictive toxicology, risk and exposure, and dose response, those uh, toxology building blocks. Um, we'll investigate human health risks in regard to exposure to chemical agents, 
uh, mutagenicity, carcinogenicity, uh, developmental toxicity, et cetera. We'll investigate uh, various environmental hazards, including BPA, mercury, pesticides, et cetera. Course two, Principles of Brain Chemistry, is with Richard Morgan, a senior process chemist at Maju Metal, and Carolina Meller, program coordinator of the Yale Center of Green Chemistry and Green Engineering. And during this course, you'll learn to identify chemicals by class, uh, recognize structure and function relationships, and the significance of biotransformation, and identify chemical properties for hazard assessments. We're really going to kind of get back into those basics of chemistry and why this part matters um, into these larger choices. We'll investigate transport and fate of toxicants in the environment and models for prediction of biological systems. Um, identifying gaps in current knowledge base concerning health effects and environmental agents. This is a really big one. Data gaps are a real reality when we try to do this work and understanding what those mean and what the limitations that are part of doing the work for sure. Uh, we'll also explore persistence and bioaccumulation factors and ecological risk. Um, this course will also talk about the historical and current role of chemical regulations in our society, environment, and economy. We'll review the 12 principles of green chemistry while recognizing their role in innovation. And we'll analyze the efficiency of various approaches to chemical design. Uh, we'll kind of go to that basic chemistry nomenclature, understanding, understanding the application of green chemistry, uh, assessing impacts of solvent usage, identify green chemistry um, alternative solvent systems as an example, and understanding guidelines for designing chemicals that have a lower inherent toxicity while investigating case studies for designing safer chemicals. And finally, course three, we have Pam Eliason, our instructor here with us today. Um, and this course, we'll learn, about, we'll learn about alternative assessment methodologies and accompanying decision rules, as well as EPA alternative assessment methodology, and understand OSHA's toolkit for trans, uh, transitioning to safer chemicals and other tools for workers, recognize decision-making frameworks for selecting chemicals. I think when I, when I took this course as a student, and, and uh, as I am the administrator as well, but as a student, the decision-making piece of this was so valuable and something I had not spent much time learning about before. So I think that's really a significant piece of this, this work as well. Uh, this course will also discuss chemical hazard assessment tools used by regulators, manufacturers, and retailers, complete a case study to assess hazards, classify hazards, and assign benchmarks. It'll discuss history of third-party evaluation tools, their advantages and disadvantages, and use by business. Really big topic and a really important one. And then uh, review third-party evaluation tools, learn to utilize life cycle thinking and life cycle management. And then finally, you'll complete a capstone project to evaluate a chemical product within a sustainability framework. And that's a chance for um, participant to explore things they are really interested in. And that opportunity happens uh, several times over the process of this program. So with that, I want to um, introduce, welcome Pam to the, to the conversation today. I really appreciate you being here. Thanks for joining us, Pam. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, can you kind of start off by telling us a little bit about why you wanted to teach a course in the Green Chemistry and Chemical Stewardship Certificate Program? Well, you know, I think it's so important to get the word out about the fact that you can find safer alternatives to the chemicals and the processes that you may be doing in your business. Um, you can find safer alternatives that work. And, and the more people know about how to think about it and how to assess what the, your options are, um, the more likely I think they are to be able to adopt safer chemistries, safer processes. And that's the goal of the Toxics Use Reduction Institute is to really help companies move towards safer practices so that their workers and their communities are not risking exposure to chemicals of concern and to have and developing, you know, generating hazardous waste that has to be managed and is also of concern. So, I mean, where I work, we're all about this. This is just a really great opportunity for me to share what I've been learning over the past 20 plus years um, with more people. And you know, I think the more, the more people that we get really understanding the ability to, to, to seek and, and, and find and adopt safer alternatives, the better. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of the nuts and bolts of what taking the course would feel like? Can you talk about the availability of instructors for questions or if they want some additional resources maybe? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, because I work in this field, I have access to a lot of current resources that 
other people may not have. Um, so I try to incorporate that into the course as, as we go along and, and responding to discussion questions is one way that I can do that. So discussion is a big part of the course and uh, it's a great opportunity to learn from each other. And so I just sort of plug in when I have, you know, resources that I think would be, you know, would just add to the conversation a little bit. So that's one way. Um, I implemented this year um, just kind of virtual office hours. So every other Wednesday before an assignment is, a due, is due, and assignments and discussions all have to be done, like every other week have to be completed. So the Wednesday prior to that, that deadline, you know, I just have a Zoom meeting where people can join and ask questions and, um, you know, not everybody takes advantage of it and that's fine. It's not mandatory, but it's a great way to share um, information. It's also a really great way for people to kind of deepen their connection with their cohort and to share ideas. And um, it really, the dialogue that goes on during this course is, is fun. It's fun. It's just exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a, a great segue into my next question, actually. Um, can you kind of describe what a typical assignment is like? And can you maybe uh, tell us about an example of something that has been turned in by participants? Sure. So first of all, I mean, the people that are participating in this course come from a really wide spectrum of backgrounds. We've got chemistry professors, we've got toxicologists, we've got people in industry, you know, product formulators, uh, footwear and apparel sector, uh, retailers, we've got um, graduate and undergraduate students, we've got people in various um, government and regulatory agencies. So people come from a really wide band of, of expertise and experience. Um, so, so as I said, the discussion is really good. And so for instance, this year, a lot of the discussion has revolved around cleaning and disinfecting. And mm -hmm. how do you make choices and assess your options, both for your own home and for your workplace? And, and so much depth of information has come to those discussions um, and assignments. The assignments um, really kind of walk the class through understanding all of the different aspects that need to be considered when you want to make a decision on a, a different alternative. And so those considerations are not limited just to what are the, what is the kind of the hazard profile of a chemical. Right. Yeah. When we think about alternatives, we think about like, well, great, let me just substitute something safer. And, and that's often an option. It's not always an option. And so we walk through all of our assignments, kind of walk students through an understanding of the bigger picture. What are the life cycle impacts associated with option A versus option B? What are, what are the, the trade-offs that you need to consider? and um, discuss what are the what are the impacts who are the stakeholders um, that that you need to be working with in order to promote adoption um, what are the drivers that influence your choices and those questions differ depending on where you are in the supply chain are you a consumer are you a regulator are you a formulator are you a, a company that uses you know, chemicals, um, where you are on that supply chain really influences your answers. Um, we use, we, we spend a little bit of time looking at one of the primary tools that companies globally um, use when trying to assess chemical substitutions, um, the green screen for safer chemicals, for safer chemistry, safer chemicals, one of those. Um, the green screen, <clears throat> which is a very, very well um, put together, very robust process that walks you through how to determine whether or not a chemical 
chemical A is safer than chemical B. You know, it, it walks you through really understanding as much as you can about the hazards associated with the use of the chemical. That is a very complex, very robust, very challenging tool. We, we bring it really down and kind of, you know, dumb it down just enough so that, you know, people can kind of get a better handle on what the results of a green screen might actually mean. Um, mm -hmm. So we do that. Talking about um, trade-offs has been really interesting and both in the discussion as well as in the assignments, it's so fascinating to see how, depending on where you are on the supply chain, you may have a very different feel for um, what are the things that you need to think about. If sure. you're a retailer thinking, you know, thinking about what your customer's reaction might be and, and then how to change behavior to, to promote adoption, different for a retailer than it is for a manufacturer than it is for you know, regulator. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, from the content in your course, uh, mm -hmm. what have you found has been the most valuable or useful for professionals? And could you give an example of that? Mm -hmm. um, well, as I say, I think that the whole course really is designed to give people a broader perspective. And, I, and so I think there's like a progression through the assignments and the discussions that's really valuable. Um, I think that it is some of those softer questions that can be most informative. So what are the drivers that influence you depending on where you are, what kind of stakeholder you are? You know, really thinking that through because that affects how you would approach trying to get change to happen, right? Mm -hmm. If you understand what drives different stakeholders and the stakeholders you're interested in. Really thinking about the trade-offs and, and um, you know, identifying a chemical that is, that is so much safer than the chemical that's currently being used would seem at the face of it like a really obvious choice, but there are so many other trade-offs to think about. What's the impact on the workers? Is it effective? How will it, address, how will it affect you know, your production rate? Um, you know, is it affordable? Is it available? Um, so really helping, helping the class kind of think about the trade-offs in a larger way. It's not just about, is it safer? Hmm. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that we talked about in this course is, as I said, cleaning and disinfection and, and antimicrobials. And um, so many, actually, I was just kind of looking through some of the capstone um, studies that have been turned in already. And several people have looked at that as their capstone project. Mm -hmm. Now, how do I assess, how do I consider the availability and the use of antimicrobials or disinfectants in, in different sectors? Um, it's, it's a really relevant question right now. Absolutely. Um, and so people have been really interested in sharing resources and tools and, and thoughts on this question with each mm -hmm. other. Um, and really analyzing it more deeply for themselves. That's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and can you, or, I mean, I guess that's a good example, but maybe you could dive a little deeper about ways students have brought projects from this course into their workplaces. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe an example of someone who was evaluating something for work, or um, how mm -hmm. can people translate this course material into their, their workplaces? Yeah, we've had... Um, We've had a number of people from one retailer attend this course over the years. And it's always been interesting to me that, you know, the people from this company walk into this course really, not, not, not across the board, of course, but like often, they're really excited to take what they're learning and go back to their teams and start to promote um, a deeper dive into what products they are putting on their shelves and, and, and being even more thoughtful. And this is a company, as I say, who's had a lot of people attend this course over the years. So they're clearly on it. And yet every time somebody from that, that um, retailer comes on board, they are just absolutely excited about taking these tools and, and diving in even deeper. Um, 
and again, like use of the cleaners and disinfectants were, you know, a very, very much a topic uh, for them. We've had, um, you know, we have somebody this year who is in the footwear and apparel industry. Um, footwear and apparel industry has a fairly progressive history at this point of really trying to look at what are the chemicals and materials that they're using. Um, and, and, and there's trade associations that are really designed to help companies move forward. Well, um, this woman is with a company that's not necessarily one of those leaders. Um, and, she, and so she's excited about taking the tools and the, the thought process and using it to be a champion with her company who she knows wants to do it and just hasn't, you know, gotten there yet. So she's mm -hmm. like, that's great. I'll be the champion and, and is using that. Um, I have another student who is so excited about this work and about bringing it back to her class. She's a chemistry teacher. And so she's interested in incorporating green chemistry and assessing the hazards associated with chemicals into her, into her undergraduate courses, which, you know, we want to see more and more of. Um, so that's super exciting as well. Yeah, it's great. lots of different ways. Mm -hmm. And then last question, um, how do you feel that this certificate program is unique? You know, it focuses on something, it shouldn't be unique, honestly, <laughs> Jill. This should be something that more and more um, universities and more and more professionals demand. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the understanding that being more sustainable and that sustainability isn't about isn't simply about your use of energy or about your ability to continue to make money you know that that there are so many factors involved um, is really important and this course ties the 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 business side to the um to the science of chemicals to the tools that you can use to bring all of that together to make a decision that you then feel comfortable recommending to your, to your decision makers. Um, so it's, it's like a really nice balance of, of the aspects of sustainability that focus on chemicals, um, but think about it in a bigger picture. And as I say, I don't think it should be unique, but I do think it is unique. I don't know that there's something else quite like this. So yeah. I'm thrilled with it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that's a good point. I, I really like how you're right. There's kind of a holistic's not the right word, but just like an A to Z about how to, how to start this process and that being able to have the data, have, the, have the, all those factors considered and the rationale behind it for making changes happen is, is, is really valuable. And I think something that, um, it's easy to learn one piece of this, but mm -hmm. when you learn all of it together in one package, it really makes mm -hmm. a big difference, I think. It makes it something you can execute, right? In your right. workplace. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. and okay. adoption is our goal, right? right. It's great mm -hmm. to learn this. It's better <laughs> if we can like make it happen. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's, this is one of those things where everyone involved in this field is passionate about seeing these principles applied. And it's yeah. not just about, yeah, you know it. We, we're all fighting to see this happen more. And I, I think that's something that I, all the instructors are so passionate about this. <laughs> and I think that's really something also that's unique about it as not every person is uh, so passionate about their field, but this one, everyone really is. And so it's exciting that we keep seeing the field grow and adapt and new tools and um, new industries. Uh, it's really impressive to me how it continues to grow. Yeah, and, and I gotta say that the, the students are also really passionate and yeah. that really comes out in the discussions. It really mm -hmm. comes out in their analysis of the questions and the assignments. I mean, they're, they're not taking this because it's for the fun of it. I mean, they're like really committed to taking this information and making it work for them. And that's great to see. Yeah, great. Thank you so much, Pam. We appreciate you answering those questions. So we're gonna go ahead and just wrap up with a few nuts and bolts about the program, and then we will um, send everyone on their afternoon. So. What can you expect when you participate in one of these courses? Um, each course is a five credit class. It takes three classes to complete the certificate program. 
It is self-paced, but you can expect to spend around five to 10 hours per week. Certain subjects may want to dive deeper. Others ones you'll have experience with and maybe not need as much time. Um, each course covers uh, five modules and there's a new module every two weeks, just about. And then there's about one assignment and one activity per module. That's what uh, Pam was kind of talking about before. And the course materials are available anytime and that module has been opened. So if you want to work at it, uh, 3 a.m., 10 a.m., 5 p.m., 10 p.m., it's, it's open for that kind of flexibility. And deadlines for assignments along each course are generally around every two weeks. So you can plan that around your schedule. Um, Pam mentioned that we have a really wide array of industries and professionals that participate in this. And so this is not an exclusive list at all, and it continues to expand. But we typically have people who are engineers, chemists, material scientists, product managers, supply chain procurement professionals, uh, sustainability consultants and coordinators, environmental managers, health and safety professionals, and risk managers apply. Um, again, not exhaustive, but certainly um, an inclusive group of people that are participating in this program. We recommend that people have a four-year degree and at least a couple of years of professional experience. It doesn't have to be within this field. It's just that um, sometimes the the aspect of this, that it's really practical information for a workplace. So we want people to be prepared for that, um, but it's not exclusive of that. And then we'd ask that people have a basic knowledge of chemistry equivalent to a basic college level chemistry course. Uh, to go ahead and join the course, go ahead and visit our, our website at osha.washington.edu. Um, and there's a re registration pages there. You'll get a, a link sent to you later as well. When you create an account, you can register for one or three courses. The registration deadline is two weeks before the start of each course. And you can register for one course at a time, but um, you will not receive a certificate unless you've completed all three courses. Each course is $910 and includes 5.0 CEUs. And then you can follow the prompts on our website to check out. And about a week before the course, you'll be provided with login information to access the course learning environment. And we're, um, I can help you navigate that if you're new to that environment as well. And the deadline for registration for course one for this cohort is September 19th, 2020. So if you have any questions, I really invite you to reach out to me. My name is Jill Teep, uh, J-S-T-O-D at uw.edu. Uh, thank you so much, Pam, and thank you for everyone for joining us today. Participants, yeah. you'll be receiving a follow-up email with the link to the certificate info site and registration links for the three courses, as well as a recording of today's session for you to review or share with colleagues. Uh, please note, again, the registration deadline for the first course is September 19th. And feel free to contact me at any time with any questions you may have. And we really um, hope you can join us come September. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, I look forward to meeting new people. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Pam. Thanks. Take care. Bye.